Hi, welcome back to a new video. Um, as you can see from the opening, uh, we're looking at film. And I think it's important to sort of say from the start, um, I've just got myself back into film. Um, and I really wanted to sort of share with you some of the things that I've learned about film, come up with some of my conclusions um, and share with you just some of my ideas. Uh, at the end of the day, they're just simply my opinions but I hope that it might help you with maybe making your own decisions about film, maybe deciding whether film's for you or not, and if it is, maybe saving you some money. Who knows? So let's start with the good. So the good thing is, for me, I was lucky in the fact that I had an OM40 Olympus, took some shots last year, um, hadn't developed film, film was there, and I thought, right, that'd be great. And I gave that a go. Um, the next thing I did was I was looking at medium format and the medium format digital cameras really didn't appeal to me. Um, my philosophy of moving away from high res has really for me paid dividends. I find that my photography is going in a direction that I like and I wanted to sort of incorporate that idea with film and medium format and I was looking at buying a camera and then behind me I looked and on a tripod that I've got is an old family camera and it is medium format. Um, it's this one, the Ensign. Um, so I thought, well, let's have a closer look at it. So I did, I looked at it and amazingly, it looks in really good shape. So I went on Amazon and I bought myself uh, some Ilford HP5, um, black and white, 400 speed. I um, learned how to use the camera. And again, I'd recommend Stranger if I would do, because I'm on YouTube. I went to YouTube, found somebody with a similar camera, looked through it, right, looked how to actually load it all up. And that was great. So I went out and a bit of kit that I'd highly recommend is a light meter. This one is a Sekonic. Uh, L308S, I already had it because I use it for studio work. And that is really needed with the Ensign because the Ensign is just a mechanical camera. There is no metering involved. You have to do it all yourself. So with no idea, well, I did because I've, I've done photography before, but film photography, but I just, it was the adventure of having a go. The first couple of shots that I've shown you um, actually were underexposed because I actually had it dialed in that it was a 500 speed and it's not, this is the maximum, this is 100 shutter speed is the maximum. Um, and actually once I put the right um, figures into it, you could see later on that it was much better. What amazed me the most about it was the clarity of it. It was phenomenal. Um, the feel of it, uh, and that, that, that sort of evoking something of maybe a past, but yet within modern sort of times, and it just, it delivered so much. So, and that was great. Um, you only get eight shots per roll, and that, that's its only really limiting factor. I then decided that I still, I wanted to stick with medium format, um, I need something for the work that I do. This my, uh, it's a Yashica C um, TLR, so Twins Lens Reflex. I bought myself some Kodak Ektar 100, loaded it up, and basically took my meter out, because again, this is mechanical, um, shot 12 shots with this, um, and lo and behold, it worked. I enjoyed the colors, I enjoyed the experience, um, film evokes everything that is photography to me. And I think that's the whole reason why a lot of people do this. They love the colors of film because film, it's, it's a chemical process rather than electronic process. I've, I've really enjoyed this whole process. I love the medium format. I love the square images, you know, six by six shots. And it's, it's been a real pleasure to get back into film. Um, I like the idea that you've got to um, prime everything. You've got to sort of deal with your shutter speeds. You've got to deal with your f-stops. Um, everything is 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 not is not sort of straightforward. But isn't that what we want as photographers? Don't we like to sort of 
muck about a bit with without and, and play around and get things right here we go so the bad features the cost the cost is a major stumbling block and it's one that will impede your um, hobby let me illustrate i bought ilford hp5 that is probably one of the cheapest films you can buy and i think delivered through amazon is about eight pounds and that's great i found a in an independent um small developer here in the uk called the film say brilliant brilliant they will develop and scan high-res images for you. Usually takes three days and that's 10 pounds. You then have to send it, that's at least another four pounds. So in total for that film there, you're roughly looking at about 20, 22 pounds. And that is for eight shots. And at over, well, you can barely work it out better than I can. But basically, you're looking at over, in that sense, £2.50 a shot. That's expensive. And you can't get away from that. Um, Kodak, Porsche 400s, 120. Those roughly were about £12 a roll. I think 12, 11, £12 a roll. So there's over £30 just in film. I just bought some Lomography, um, Color Negative 400, 120 film. They were £30. So in total, that represents £60. That's not cheap. Um, I don't care how big your pockets are. £60 for basically, um, well, what are you looking at? 72 shots it is a lot. And that's just the film. Developing costs, double it, because it's £10 a roll. So you're then looking at £140, £150 in developing costs for those. And the reason why it comes to that is because no matter what you send in, no matter how many pictures, how many photographs are on a film, they will charge you the same amount. So you're far better to actually go out there, especially with doing medium format. If you go for something like this, this gives you 12 shots. The camera itself costs just over £100. And therefore, in terms of actual buying the camera, it's relatively inexpensive for what it does, medium format. Um, and then, as you said, I'm looking at about, what is it? I mean, I'm looking at 72 shots, which is far better than using that. That's great, but I'm not going to be using it a huge amount because it does cost quite a bit, although it's a fabulous camera. This is producing some really great results. And that is probably the cheapest way you could possibly do it. Prepared. I've averaged it out. You're roughly looking at about two pounds a shot. And that's based on the fact that the FilmSafe, who are fantastic, not sponsored by them or affiliated with them, but they're very, very good. They're very reasonable with their prices. They will develop and scan. And you put all of that into the fact, and it's still going to cost you that sort of money. When photography was born, it wasn't for the masses. It was for people who had money. It was expensive. The film cost a lot of money, and we're back there again. That's the really bad element, the cost. The other bad thing you've got is the equipment. This one, I was lucky I already had it. I was extremely lucky in the fact of being well looked after, and I was even luckier still that it works and takes fabulous pictures. I was very lucky because I went a little bit off script because people talk, oh, you get the she could be or whatever, you, you know, if you're going to do these, blah, blah, blah. I didn't bother with that. I just simply went off what, what the buyer had said about it. I simply went off the features and I got that at a reasonable price because believe me, the TLRs. If you go roller flex or roller cord, you're going to be approaching two, three, four, five hundred pounds. And I wasn't prepared to put the money into that. And it works. I was lucky. It's not perfect, but it produces a perfect image. And that was luck. I'll share a story. My Olympus on 40 that I talked about at the beginning. 
it's now dead, it's finished. I bought it 20 plus years ago, second hand. Um, I put a new battery in it um, last year. It worked immediately and away it went. That was great shot, 36 shots from an Ilford black and white 30, for 35 mil. And it was great. But I came back to it about a month ago. I knew the battery would be dead, put a new battery in it, nothing. It is finished. I think the camera's finished. And here's the other bad part trying to find a camera that actually definitely works is difficult you will read all sorts of descriptions on websites a particular website that sells it via auction and you still are taking a risk and it's something you're going to have to be prepared to, to accept one of the ways around trying to get something that's got more of a guarantee is to go and buy it from a proper shop, a second-hand shop. Often they will come with um, a guarantee. The guarantee won't last very long, but at least you've got some comeback. But be aware, you will be paying more. Something like this that I might have spent £100 on might be towards the £140, 100 whatever, because obviously you've got to make a markup, that's understandable, but they will service it. They will check it for light leaks. They will put new seals and they'll make sure that it works. So that could be an option. If you're not bothered about medium format, 35mm is slightly cheaper to get into. Um, a 35mm camera will cost you anywhere roughly between 40 and 150 pounds, depending on which one you want. Um, and again, you, you've got to roll the dice. Some people have serviced them, some people won't. Some will come with guarantees, some won't. If you buy it online, you, it, it's a hit and miss. Just be very careful who you're buying from. Make sure they've got good ratings. Make sure it's 100% positive. And to be honest, for, th for some of them, I think they really should have, they will take returns. And a lot of them will say that. And if they are prepared to say that, then they're prepared to put their um, faith in the product. And if they turn around and say, no, you just take it as you see it, walk away from it. Because it could be that it's been, something's been hidden, it doesn't work, just be careful. So 35 mil could be a way in, um, but then there's one final option. There's one actually I'm looking to to buy and then to do some videos on it to see, well, look, does it work? There's a huge thing at the moment where people go out to charity shops and buy themselves a cheap plastic camera. I'm not prepared to do that because to be perfectly honest, the cheap plastic cameras are cheap for a reason. Yes, they'll say, oh, you get a good enough result, but let's face it, they were, they were never brilliant at the time and they're probably still not. If you go midway and you look for, for cameras that are pretty good, got some good reputation about them, you pay a little bit more money, it might work out really well. And certain cameras, more like the point and shoot variety, actually produce fantastic results. You can enjoy shooting your portraits, uh, your ektar, all sorts in 35mm. And if you're lucky, a lot of those come with 24 to 36, 36 exposures. And I think once you look at that, that then makes the costs much, much cheaper. You're then looking at maybe a pound or so a shot. If you're not in the UK, you can work it out in terms of, of how much it would cost you. It's, it's still costing you money, but maybe the point you shoot route to begin with, and that's I said, I'm gonna do some research for you. I'm actually, I'm at the moment, I'm, sort of eBaying to see if I can find something that's a reasonable price. And then maybe if I do that, I can then share with you whether that was successful. Or not. The good, the bad, and finally the... So which one am I gonna go? Am I gonna go, no, it's ugly, just don't bother with it, or actually it's brilliant, okay? So here we go. Personally speaking, it's brilliant. Um, connecting with photography again, connecting with where photography started and what it was all about. It, it is without doubt intoxicating. Once you get into the films and you're loading your film into your camera and you're setting your camera up with all of its uh, settings, it's fantastic. And I think the way I'm looking at it, it's something that I'm going to enjoy occasionally. It's not gonna be the main thing that I do because simply it's too expensive. I can't afford to run photography, film photography, doing a roll a week. 
you would send yourself into major financial problems and I can't afford to do that. I think the majority of us probably think maybe the same, I don't know, but it's my opinion. I'm sticking with my digital because the digital photography idea is more for the masses. People can be a photographer much cheaper these days. <laughs> I like my digital photography. I'm not going away from digital photography, but this as a complement to that is a wonderful part of it. And I enjoy it thoroughly. And I'm sure that if you take up a camera and you put your film in it, you'll do exactly the same. If you've liked what you've seen and what you've heard today, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. And we, I will see you soon. Uh, take care, enjoy your photography, um, get in touch. Bye-bye.